preparing our hearts. We're going we're to get ready uh, in just a moment uh, to go before. Well, here's what I want to do this time. We'll do a little bit different uh, in respect of going in. I want to show you something. I want you to come go with me. I'm going to, before we approach the throne, before we go before the heavens, and acknowledge his sovereignty and the absoluteness of all uh, that he's purpose, that he's playing. And so I want to read something to you tonight because I know that for where we are, we you know we've talked about uh, we talked about the, the, the trifecta of what's taking place. And that is, we're in the midst of a, a, an awakening. At the same time, we're experiencing what we consider a visitation. And then we said, it's a shaking. And so there, there's a, it's a trifecta of things that are taking place uh, at this particular time. And in that, as we seek to try to understand what, what Papa is planning, what his purpose, uh, what we're to capture, what we should be gaining, what we should be getting based on where we are. And in that, that means number one, and we recognize because the Bible prophetic has already told us, gave us a hint about this hour. And that's one reason we're talking about the body of Christ, we're talking about the body of Christ. We're really trying to urge us as a church, as a body, to understand what heaven has mandated, what he has purposed, what's on Papa's heart, so that we're not missing. And so we don't get trapped, we don't get caught up. As a matter of fact, this morning, you know, we were going through uh, Romans 8, chapter this morning on the prayer line. We're kind of talking about uh, the Bible said how that Hope saves us. And like hope saves us, he also said, likewise, 26 verse 8, eight chapter said, likewise, the spirit help with our infirmities. And, and, and in that, as he began to speak, says that likewise, the spirit help with our infirmities. Because we don't know what to pray for as we are. And think about it, that's what, that's what the word of God was saying. That's what the Holy Spirit was revealing. And so God gave us a helper. Gave us a helper. Gave us uh, one that can help, that can help us. And, that, and he was given to help. And so we're in a time right now like never before. And that's one of the things we're trying to encourage that in the trifecta of awakening. Just think about it. If we're in, in the midst of an awakening, and we're talking about things that can happen that suddenly demand uh, your focus, demand your attention, demand for you to, you to raise the level of your consciousness. And we're talking about an awakening. We're talking about as a church. To think about it. When the Bible talks about begin to speak and address those things. And I, like I said, I want to show you something. It's going to get you to come go with me. And I'm going to go to do something that uniquely I don't usually do. But I'm going to do that tonight. And so I'm going to ask you to come go with me. Indulge me here. Now listen. In Romans, in Romans the 13th chapter, I'm not going to read that. But I want to talk because in that 13th chapter, verse 11, he tells you that it is high time. And then he says it's high time to awake out of sleep. And when he, when he speaks to us about high time, and I want to signify right there in Romans 13, we're going to go over here. I'm going to get you to come go with me just for a moment. We're going to go to Hebrews, uh, and I'm going to read this, and after that we're going to pray, and we're going to approach the throne. But in Hebrews, that, that 12th chapter, I want to share something with you. I just feel like this needs to be in your hearing. In Hebrews, the 12th chapter, the Bible says, in that 25th verse beginning, he says, see that you do not refuse him who speaks. Right? Now, in Hebrews 12, it says, see that we don't refuse him. Now, when he says, see that we don't refuse him that speaks, and notice in that 25th verse, it says, see that you don't speak, refuse him that speaketh in King James. And he says, see that you don't refuse him. And there we're talking about, uh, in other words, when he said, tell us to make sure that we don't refuse him. It's kind of like when the Lord is speaking to you, and you know how we, like, we love to say when the Lord tells you, well, listen, I want you to give so-and-so $500. And we say, devil, get thee behind me. I rebuke thee, Satan. And, you know, immediately we, we, we begin to kind of beg off. We begin to say we, re, we really relate to something that is inconvenient, something we don't want to do, uh, we don't want to do, and we immediately kind of relate to the devil. And, and so that's what that word there saying that we got to do in this hour. And so I'm, I'm not going to get into it right this moment, but I want to really present it to you when he says, see that you don't refuse. The word refuse there means to beg God off. Don't beg him off. And sometimes, you know, you can be sensing God's leading you, directing you to do something, and immediately you're trying to kind of drown it out. You're trying to kind of, mm, mm, mm. you know, God tells you, well, I want you to fast today. And you say, man, I fast last week. I fast two days in earth. And, you know, we started uh, comparing and using other circumstances. We start pointing to other sacrifices. And we try to use that to override something God's trying to get you to do right now. And so he's telling you, this is an hour, this is a time. And for where we are, it's an hour that you're going to have to really be sensitive to what he's requiring, what he's saying. And he's telling make sure you don't beg him off. See that you don't try to override past sacrifices, past experiences, past obedience, and try to be rewarded in the present day. It's not going to suffice. We're in a time, we're in a day, we're in an hour, where we're going to be sensitive to the Lord. And because of the time we're living in, 
And you know, we, we kind of use it this way. And, uh, and what I'm going to do right here, I'm going to ask you to come go with me. I'm, I, I want to I finish these verses, then I'm going to come back, and we're going to go with that record because I can feel myself pushing right now. And I don't want to do that. I want to get these verses in and then come back. So now go with me real quick. Notice what it says. See that you do not refuse him that speaketh for the Bible said, if they escape not. And I, these are things I need to emphasize to you tonight because that's why I'm reading scripture. Because I know I get called up and, and I'm, I'm, I'm off to the races. But here he says, but see, 20 verse, see that you do not refuse him that speaketh for if they escape not who refused him that spake on earth, much more shall we not escape if we turn away from him that speaketh from heaven. Now, I want to emphasize that because I want us to know why there's such a demand on us and why we're in such a crisis-ridden time and why it seems to be so unjust, so unfair. What the demand on us and the things that we're having to be challenged by and some of the hardships and the difficult we're experiencing. Because remember, and you think about it, if we went back to Exodus 19, we saw where the Lord began to tell Moses to bring all the children to Egypt. He said, but make sure, make sure that you make sure that nobody comes beyond that the demarcation line. I want you to mark off around this mountain and make sure that nobody goes beyond the point. Because if they do, they're going to be pierced through the dark. So think about it in the natural, how that they were going to be physically killed, destroyed, cut off at, at the mountain. And God said, you got to make sure, man, you make sure that you let everybody know the pending danger, the pending destruction, because if anybody goes, they're going to be pierced through the dark. And can you imagine what, what at Papa's disposal, I mean, disposal to cut cut off things, if he could send an angel, you know, many times an angel killed 85, in one case killed 85,000 men, 85,000. And I mean, sometimes when the plague hit, you know, when, over that Exodus 14, when Moses told Aaron, get down there, man, because the plague was killing people, 14,700, that particular day began to go down because God was demanding something, and the plague had already hit. And you can imagine how, how things were hitting people. They were just dying like flies. And if there was no one standing in that gap, I mean, so I'm just trying to give you a picture. If in the natural, how the way people were dying. You remember when they came against Moses and Corbin began to challenge him and the ground opened up? They had a ground, I mean, the ground opened up. I mean, they immediately began to, swap, uh, began to swallow them up. So I just want you to get a picture. If the Bible said in those days when God was addressing them, addressing them in that time that they had come out of Egypt, and the rebellion that they were in and how God was swiftly dealing with dealing with uh, their rebellion and their idolatry and how God was swiftly dealing. He said, but think about it. If in the natural, if those people at that mount in a physical way, and I'm judging in the earth realm, he said if they did not escape in the earth realm, what God was, was bringing upon them, the judgment he's bringing upon them, their behavior, the lack of obedience, their lack of sensitivity, not following through, this blatant disregard, disrespect for who God is. And God said, listen, if they did not escape, and so I'm trying to paint a picture right here so we can capture the hour. We can capture where we are. We can understand what's going on and know what it's going to require, know what's going to have to be applied. And many of us are not in this gear yet. Many of us are still got a casual consciousness. We're still scrolling. And we're still kind of doing our own thing. And we don't, I mean, we, we kind of recognize we're in a global pandemic. But we don't quite know what that means. We don't know where, where Papa is in this. And it's crucial. We're in that time when Jesus was telling a group in Matthew 16. But here's what I want to do before we get into that. I'm going to get you to come go with me. We're going to approach the throne just for a moment. And as we approach the throne, we want to acknowledge him. Because I want to allow him to, I want to be able to heal, submit, in case God don't want me to go the way I'm going. And he know he has all, he has all, I mean, he has carte blanche. And I'm going to give him his way, his permission to do what he wants to do. So I'm going to get you all to come go with me. Father, once again. As we're acknowledging right now, we understand, we, we surrender, we acknowledge the Holy Writ. And as I'm agreeing with the saints, we're agreeing together tonight. And we're believing before the throne. I approach the heavens for every man, woman, boy, and girl that's listening. Every single one within the sound of our voice tonight, as we approach the throne, we approach the heavens. And we're asking the Spirit of God to speak. We're asking you to declare it out among us. We wait before the throne. We recognize Isaiah 4. It says, they that wait upon the Lord. Well, God, tonight we're here. You said, they that wait upon the Lord shall renew our exchange of strength. We came tonight to make that exchange for the heaven. 
We came to give you human frailty for divine energy. We came to give you human weakness for divine strength. And so tonight at this place as we're making an exchange, we're joining the heavens. And God, all these, my brothers and my sisters that are gathered on tonight, and everyone that's listening within the sound of our voices, it's our cry before the throne, before the heavens. And I'm asking you among us tonight, I mean, I surrender before the throne, I recognize them, but dust, I recognize this clay, and I'm asking you right now that you'll begin to utter, speak, I surrender, I yield. And God, I'm asking you now because we need, we need articulation, God of expression, and we need clarity of thought. So it's my quiet tonight, I'm asking you to speak. As I give information, I'm asking the Holy Spirit, you make it revelation. It's my quiet, you'll minister the hearts and minds tonight. I need you to speak to this people. I need power that which is in your heart, that which is on your mind. I need you to begin. I need you to convince. I need you to persuade. I need you to move on hearts. I need you for those that are standing in need tonight, tonight and need the heavens to speak. I'm asking you to, I surrender before the throne in this place. And so we thank you, we bless you, we trust you, and we're agreeing with every man, woman, boy, and God, this person. Everyone who agreed together with that prayer, shout to the glory of God, amen, and so be it. Well, listen, God is awesome. And so now as we think about it, I'm just kind of trying to lay out a little bit of groundwork. Give us just a little bit of tapestry, a little bit of backdrop, of kind of for where things are, and so we can have an idea and understanding of what the Lord is requiring. As we look around and look at this global pandemic, and we look at what's happening with people, we look at us finding ourselves in a position, a place that we've never been before, and trying to understand what all this means. But we're saying something, because remember, as particularly as believers, and you know, we're, we're in an hour now, and we, we, we kind of told us that, and notice when we're talking about Hebrews 12, and I'm going to look there just a little bit more, and I want to share with you, I'm going to try to look at Matthew 24. And I want us to understand there's a few things we need to know. And as you think about Exodus 19, and think about what the purpose was, what the plan was, what was God after? When God told Moses, bring all the people to the mountain. And, and, and I mean, nobody knew what was going to happen, but they already told Moses, we don't, you know, we don't want to hear, man, you talk to us. Well, let's, let's don't go hear from God. And that's kind of where we are right now. We're kind of people, you know, we, we refer to them as people having get your ears. You know, you got people running from place to place, and they're just running all over the place and going, and they're trying to find that spot that's, that's kind of comfortable, that place where they're unchallenged, that place that puts no demand on them. Do you know what you're saying? In that demand, in that itching ear thing, you're saying, I want to go where I want to hear men talk. I want to hear the preacher. I'm not listening for God. I don't want to hear from God. I'm trying to hear from men. I, itching ears, my brother and sister. We're going where our fancy is served. We're going where it's convenient. We are attaching ourselves to places where it's the, it's, it's the, the path of least, we call it uh, least resistance. And so as people don't understand what that means when it says that people are going, I mean, heaping to themselves, having itching ears, because they are finding places they don't want to hear from the voice of the Lord. They want to hear from a man. They want to hear from people that we think gathered together. I mean, I mean, they got all the programs. They got everything in place. And listen, nothing wrong with a great, grand, awesome program and plan, long as God is dictating it, long as you can hear God from it. We're in a time now we can look at what's taking place in the reason that we're experiencing what we experience, and even in the pandemic, the global, global pandemic that we're experiencing right now, is because this thing is catching the, na the nation's attention. And so in this, as we look at this, and you know, this is something I'm just not, listen, I'm not just saying this because we're in the crisis. Now, many know I've been beating this drum for a while. I told them even when, and, and I'm sharing this not because I'm trying to say, we're not breaking any records over here when it comes to prophetic insights and understanding. Because I recognize I'm dust. I recognize I'm frail. But at, at, at the same time, I use that same place, that same place to be able to carry out what God purpose. And so I, I use it to my advantage. You know, when people don't think much of you, it's kind of like folks who, when they turn 55 and 60 years old, they just old enough not to care what you think about them. And you know, the older people, they say, well, they don't care. I don't live alone. I'm a son. I don't live my life. I don't care what you think about what I'm saying. But this is what I'm saying. And so they're going to give it out. They're going to tell you that some of us that have been through enough rejection, enough betrayal, and people treat us just, I mean, they treat us just right now not to care what they think about us. And so that's what we're talking about, the shifting and the changing of the guard and what God's raising up. Maybe they've been rejected so long, put down so long, another put down just ain't going to matter. It ain't going to make no difference at this level. And so we're trying to get people prepared and get them to understand what God's doing. Man, one more rejection, one more put down. It ain't going to make no difference. Somebody said, well, what about the straw that broke the camel's back? Man, I already been to surgery. God already fixed that back up. I'm already, one more, did it. Listen, did, that's what John said. John said, what did y'all come out here to see? A reed shaking in the wind? No, man, God had already put some steel in that back. Man, I 
done got my surgery. I got surgery, and now listen, you snakes, you vine. But he didn't care. He didn't care about the dignitaries. He didn't care about that position or that post. God done done serving. Slipped that piece of steel in his back. So he was ready to stand and obey and prepare the way of the Lord. And said, Jeremiah, say with Jeremiah said, oh, listen. The Lord said, listen, man, don't you know how to ordain you to be a prophet for a nation? Oh, no, I'm just a child. He said, Jeremiah, don't say you're just a child because I've ordained you. I've done something your mama don't even know I've done. I've slipped some of your, I've injected something within your person, within your being. And so my brothers, what I'm saying, the people that God has prepared for such a time as this, and you're going to begin to hear things, man, I promise you, if you're in that itching ear crowd, you ain't going to be able to take this wind. That's a wind that's blowing right now. That's a people that God's raising up. That's a people that God's urging. It got to obey him. And God's causing them to see that, listen, by compromising, and we're in that Matthew 16 thing where he says, listen, he who seeks to save his life, you're going to lose it. And the whole adage is this, anything you compromise and keep, you're going to lose. And so there are those that are awakening, that are awakening. What the awakening? We're at a level, new level of consciousness. God's bringing us to that thing we've compromised with this, compromised with that, tried to settle that because we want to be with friends with that, and found out, man, even when you compromise, they won't be no friend because that's not who they were in the on the onset. That's not who God made them to be. You gotta understand, in these days, my brother, you gotta find your joint. Are you hearing me? I said, you gotta find your joint. You gotta find those people that God has purpose that are conducive for your purpose and to work with you on what God's calling. And them the ones you don't have to chill each you. Those are the ones who have to boost you. Those are the ones who have to encourage you. And them the ones who are expecting to esteem you greater than themselves. And brother, my brother and sister, that's one of the ways that this hour is going to mark who are who's being shifted, the transitional things, because it's going to be those people don't care about you being successful. And in, in respect of, they want to push you. They want to see you doing great things. They want you obeying Papa. They want you to walk in your calling. They want you to be anointed. They're hoping, they're praying for your anointing. They're praying for your, your, your skill set. They're praying for your talent, your abilities, just that the God has placed in you to come forth. And that's the people that wants that to come forth, and I promise you, what God's raising up, that's going to be their attitude, their mindset, and they're going to be, and that that's how you're going to begin to recognize this new order and what God's raising up and the shifting and the change of the God because they're going to be from this Hebrew square. Take a look real quick. Notice what it says. See that you don't refuse him because these are going to be that kind of people that God's raising up. People that make sure they're not going to be begging God off because everybody has begged them off. Everybody's delayed them. Everybody's hindered them. That's that 11th hour. That's that 11th hour crowd that people that God's raising up in these days. And as I was sharing earlier about concerning that we've been beating this drum for a while and turn telling people that even when President, uh, President we call him 45, if, when we say 45, President John, Donald J. Trump, we talk about him, we told them going that this man is an instrument of shaking. And so I know everybody's pretty much disturbed about what he says. And now folks are disturbed about what he says, they just won't say it publicly. But in that, in that, what I'm saying, God, he's an instrument because God's after something. God's demanding something. And so, you know, we've been talking about the people that left, left the country, left town because they're just afraid. And then you had preachers, oh my God. I mean, if you heard how they were talking about what Trump, uh, President Trump was going to do once he get office, my God, you would have thought that Jesus didn't make it. You would have thought Gabriel was a host. The way they were talking, the way people, so, I mean, you just thought it just didn't happen. My brother and sister, you got to understand. And we're trying to get people to understand. Listen, listen, it's not, that's no man that's standing, as God told us to do the running. He said, why are you afraid of a man whose breath is in his nostrils? I mean, who has, listen, if a man who has to inhale and exhale, God said, you need to be afraid of a man who's got to, who's got to inhale and exhale to, to live. Think about it for a moment. God lives in a perpetual breath. He is an eternal breath. He's an eternal wind. He's, he's eternal spirit. The Bible says, according to John, to John 4, chapter 24, says, God is spirit. He's not a spirit. He's spirit. He is a perpetual, eternal breath. And then and God don't have to inhale and exhale to live. And so God said, why are you afraid of a man whose breath is in his nostrils? And my brothers and sisters, we're in that hour, in that time, in that season, where all these things that we've been fearing, all these things we've had trepidations about, we're going to have to get a clue where we are and recognize what the Lord is requiring. Notice what he says. He says, see that you don't refuse him. You can't afford to let people intimidate you and make you refuse God because of what you think about men. We're in that time. Notice what he says. See that you don't refuse him that speak of, but he said, but if they escape not who refused him that spake on earth, much more shall we not escape if we turn away from him that's take, that speaketh from heaven. So think about it for a moment. If God on earth was revealing himself, and you think about God now speaking, he's not speaking from the earth realm, he's speaking from the heavenly realm. 
And we're speaking from a realm now, a, 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 a realm that's so far exalted, so, so superior than any other time we've ever been in. Because now, at that time, Jesus told us, in, when he was talking to Mark 7 chapter, about this speaking concerning the Spirit, when he said, the alley of better go for the rivers of living water. And when he's talking to them from that place, and he said, this spake he concerned the spirit that had not been given yet. So at that time, God was dealing with his people externally. That's why he was a pillar, a pillar of fire at night, and there was a pillar of cloud by day. They had to follow his move. God had to manifest himself. Everything had to be in the manifest realm for them to know when God was going to do something. But here we are time now, and that's what happened. Why Adam and them got trapped. Adam and them got trapped because at the time, they were living in a glory that God had covered their nakedness, and they, they were not aware of sin. It was not conscious of the physical realm as it relates to it. And, and so in it, I'm talking about in terms of what God had purpose, what God had planned for them. So when Adam and Eve ate from the tree, and Adam is looking and don't see no manifestation of death, oh, okay, well, things must be good. We can proceed from here. Because it looked like what God said in the natural wasn't so. And he, and he got caught up, he got trapped by looking at verses, and this is what I'm saying, the hour of the time, my brother says, though he's speaking from heaven. God is speaking by, realm, by, by virtue of the spirit realm. And in that realm of the spirit, what God is demanding, what God is requiring, what he's calling for in this, in this hour, in these days, in this time. My brother says, we're going to have to be somewhere in him. And I'm telling you right now that we're going to have to. And what the indicts is, because he's speaking from heaven, that's what the awakening is about. The awakening is shifting in the level of consciousness that we have about God. See, when we talk about people sleepwalking versus when he says awake, you sleep, because he's talking to the people that are supposed to be already awakened, because he's talking to the church. The Ephesians 5, the Romans 11, this is the church. He's not out here talking to the secular world. He's not talking to people that, that have the spirit, have not already been, I mean, already received the Lord, received his word, received, I mean, back in the emerging of baptism in the spirit. These are people that have had the experience, and yet he's saying awake. And so it's some of the waking is another level of consciousness because of how he's going to be speaking in our day. Remember what he said in 1 Timothy 4 and 1? Now the Spirit speaks expressly that in the latter time, some are going to depart from the faith, giving heed. Now notice, he says the Spirit's going to be speaking. That, that's why he said you've got to have to have an ear to hear what the Spirit is saying. Because God's going to be speaking from heaven. And without an ear, remember what he said in Matthew 16, he said, woe to the hypocrite. He said, because you can discern sky, but you can't discern the time. That's going to be serious woes on people who are not discerning. See, because when you're not discerning, that means you're inexperienced, you're immature, and there's a lot of things that you, that you would need that would make for your peace, and in your day of visitation, you're going to miss. So we're in that now. We're in the trifecta of visitation, trifecta of awakening, and also shaking. And so in the trifecta, we're going to have to have people that are sensitive to God, mature in the spirit, can be able to hear because God's speaking from heaven. He's not speaking on the earth. So why it's difficult for people to discern? And that's why now you've got to have standard bearers. That's why the Bible says in Ephesians, the fourth chapter, he said he led captivity to captive. And he gave gifts as men. He gave some to the apostles. So think about it. In this, this fivefold administration that God's raised up for the end time for the last days. Now these are post-ascension apostles. These are post-ascension. These are not, and listen, and I know people scrapping about whether apostle Paul was one of the twelve or not. He replaced Matthias. But let me tell you something. I have a different take on that, but we all, you know, we all got our right to be wrong, right? But in that, as we understand, when he says he talked about uh, the, the fivefold administration, he said he led captivity captive. He captured that that he was going to raise up. That they would understand coming from captivity, and then that, that, that's why I said this hour, this day, is taking us back. That's why the guard is changing because God has blessed people that He's brought out from a place, and they forgot they came from captivity. You got leadership that's forgot, and as a result of what they got, they cornered the market. They don't want nobody else in on it. They're not sharing. They're not exchanging. They're not letting people in on to understand to know what they can do, what, how they access what they access. No, man, I got mine. You better get yours. And as a result of that attitude, that attitude has caused them to be ripped from the priesthood. It's caused them to be plucked out and caused the order to shift. Because think about it. You go to Matthew 20, and you begin to hear that when, when those that came in the 11th hour, they came in the Matthew 20 chapter, coming in the 11th hour, that's when they sent his servants out the high levels in that 11th hour. The Bible said when they came in, and he, when, he, when the land on the set down, the cut with the pay is going to be, and so let them know you're going to be paid the same thing as those that have been here already. And immediately, those that have been here, oh man, they start having a sense of entitlement. They start to challenge. I dare you pay them what you're paying us. We've been here and we've borne the burden and the heat of the day. And now see, this is what happened. 
But people seem to be first. There's something about that attitude, that mindset of feeling superior, being first, laying the groundwork, being a foundation. And many times that's what's happened to many of our leaders. And y'all know I shared with you. I've been trying to uh, share with what even uh, what Miles, Dr. Miles Monroe was sharing with about the dream he had, about seeing all these leaders in graves. And when the graves digging up the graves, and I think this was a dream. And as they're digging up the grave, they see all these leaders in the grave. And I mean, they've got all these batons fastened in their hands. And they said they had to pry their hands open to get the batons out. Because there was an intimidation. There's an intimidation by people when it's young ministries are coming on, young coats are being loose, doctors are calling others because it's their time to do what God called them to do. All of a sudden, people in charge of folks seemingly who got that first round, somehow, some way, we started having a sense of entitlement. And as a result, so we started to dictate to people when they can do what God told them to do. Well, you ain't ready yet. And you, you're not ready. Well, you're okay, you're going to be ready after a while. But it, and it seems like your time never comes. It seems like you're going to never be ready. And so one way we can know we can be getting ready, no one will get ready because you're training it. You're developing it. You're doing what the Lord told you to do in Ephesians 4. He said he led captive and captive gave kisses men. He said he gave some to be apostles, some prophets, evangelists, and even some evangelists, and some pastors and teachers. He said, for the perfecting of the saints, that is bringing them the right order, arranging them, stretching them, bringing them to that divine alignment of what God intended. So guess what? So a lot of us think of what God's doing it on his own. I mean, he's doing it. Listen, he's not waiting. He's using this process. That's why we're seeing this such an equalizer right now. That's why we all got mega churches right over now. And that's 10. What y'all say? Every one of us got mega churches right over now. We all been equalized at that place. Because it's making us recognize because we're having to humble ourselves. All of us have to humble ourselves and recognize that in the body there is no big eyes and little use. That's no, that doesn't exist. Remember the first century church? The Bible said those who had much had nothing over and those who had little had no lack. No lack. The Bible said they had all things coming. God's bringing us back to that place. People that I'm talking about, we're getting back to normal. Oh, my brothers and sisters, just think about it for a moment. We're getting back to normal. Can I share with you normal just for a moment? Think about it for a moment. When I go back to thinking about normal, I think about it in 2017 when 30,000 people died from influenza. You know, think about 2018 and 30, 31,000 died from influenza. That's 61,000 people dying in two years. When I think about the, the sex slave rings, when I think about the kidnappings, they tell me 376,000 of our lighter people in the skin and brothers and sisters what, what have been kidnapped. They tell me of, of, of our dark skin, our skilled brothers and sisters, they tell me 236,000 of them have been kidnapped. And that's in one year. And then we think about it, they tell me that in Illinois, 1,200 people missing a day. 1,200 missing a day. Then I found out, you know, we talk about Michael Jackson, we talk about Whitney Houston, we talk about when they died, what God revealed from them that these two were sacrifices. And what we discovered when they died, that people on prescription drugs, well, at, 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 at the tune of 60 million people were on prescription drugs, that's in 1990. And then since that time, we think about now in the 2000s, now we're at, we're at, we're at a point now where it's a, it is a pandemic. Because now it's over almost 200,000 people on prescription drugs. And it's only 300, 200 million, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, 190, almost 200 million. 200 million people on prescription drugs. And it's only 310 million in the whole nation. So we think about it, you only got 310 pe 10 million people in the nation, and over 200,000 200, 200, million of them, I mean 200,000, just think about it, two, I'm sorry, 200 million of them, I'm sorry, get it right in a minute, 200 million of them on prescription drugs. Just think about it for a moment. In 1960, now it's, think about it, we can see the progression. Now here we are in 2010, it was 200 million. 200 million people on prescription drugs. And we told you that's more than one or every other person on it. And then we think about what's happening with China. We think about now that China, I mean, delaying. A lot of things we're asking for, they're taking their time getting. And we've given over the prescription drugs, particularly our major drugs. We've locked down, held, up, held back. Oh, that, that because we're trying to find cheap labor. As a result of it, now we're at the mercy. Now we're in a pandemic. Now we're in a global pandemic. Now we need those medications on site, on spot, on point. And now we got to have at the mercy of someone else to give us. So, I mean, I'm trying to think about it. And I think about it as we think about it almost here. And I know in Birmingham, uh, in Birmingham, almost every single year, we're over 100. We're over 100, 100 homicides. And that's, listen, we're talking about in, in that arena, we're talking about our dark skin, our skin brothers. I mean, a hundred of them a year are being killed. 
And I'm talking about, we think about statistically how they're dying. And listen, we ain't even to mention about the abortions. There are over 50 million around the globe. 50 million babies are being killed every year. Oh. I'm just trying to find normal. Can y'all help me? Help oh. me find normal. Mm -hmm. Let's go back to what we're trying to get back to normal. And let me tell you something, my brother. So the shaking is about to make sure it ain't normal no more. It's about moving us from that place of thinking we somewhere thinking we're secure. Somewhere you think there's a spot, there's a place where we're secure. No, my brothers, it ain't never been secure. You go back to 9 11, you, I mean, no matter, you can go back to any of these wars. You can go back to any of these crises, any of these difficulties. And even what we're experiencing right now in this global pandemic, man, this thing been happening every 100 years for the last four centuries. You go back to 1720. You go back to 1820. You go back to 1920. Uh, the Spanish flu, the, uh, the swine flu, and now he won 2020. Every 100 years, we get this shake up. Every 100 years, this is taking place. Listen, you can go back 17 years and look at the world. Well, it's almost every 17 years we're we, we in a war. Go back and look at every time. We think about the Korean War. We think about uh, 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 Hiroshima. We think about the bomb being dropped. We think about 42. I mean, the Second World War, the First World War. We think about right now, the war that we're in right now. Think about Afghanistan. Think about uh, Vietnam. You think about Gulf. You think about Saudi Arabia. We think about, I mean, the Gulf War. We think about Vietnam. We think about all these wars that are going on the whole time. My brothers, they help me discover normal. I'm trying to find that place. I'm trying to find what normal is. And y'all need to help me find it. Because if y'all find it, please, man, listen. Listen, hit us up and post it up there and help us find normal. Because I've been trying to find I've been looking back, searching, and I'm looking at all these things that have turned out, all this stuff that's happening. And people say, let's get back to normal. I just haven't found that spot. If y'all find this spot, they tell me even when Jesus was walking the they killed him. Am I right about that? Listen, they, not only did they kill him, they beat him, they persecuted him, they cut off James' head. Every one of the disciples was killed with the exception of John. I mean, they killed every one of them, even in the first century. Can we get back to normal, please? I just want to get back there. Can y'all get back? Well, help us get back. Mm -hmm. My brother, so you can forget that. That's out. We're just trying to get, get, to, get you away from a false normal. We're trying to get rid of the myth okay. of people trying to look for normal. But my brother, so that now, now we call now we call this our new normal. Oh, new normal. And then when something hit that, then we're gonna look for another new normal. Then when something hit that, then we're gonna call it another new. My brother and sister, you gotta remove the markers, put the markers down. There's a shaking going on. That is an awakening going on. We're gonna try fact up where God's shaking things up. And listen, and, and don't get me wrong, everything that's taking place, God didn't get the credit for everything. In that we know I told you the kingdoms are clashing. That's one reason I want to read these passages to Because the Bible says, God says, I'm going to shake everything that can be shaken. That's why it's global. That's why every system, every system is being impacted. Whether, I'm telling you, whether we're talking about the globals, or whether we're talking about global economics, it doesn't matter. We're talking about government. We're talking about every single level. And all the way to the church, everybody's having to move. And I know some of us still trying to maintain. We're still trying to do normal. No, I'm going to have church. We're going anyway. We're going to be up there. Well, I don't care what they say. We're going to do normal. My brother said, so even if you was at church, it's still not going to be more normal. Because what we're finding out, people that are going in rebellion, doing it anyway, and they're coming back, got the coronavirus. They, next thing you know, somebody's dead. Some of them want to end rebellion. They're still getting hit. They're still getting attacked. Either way it goes. Because my brothers and sisters, you got to listen. You can't refuse him. We're in an hour. You've got to be able to listen. you got to be sensitive. Go listen. God is this. God don't need to rebel against a system, against a system that He set up. He said, "God so loved the world. He didn't so love believers. He didn't so love the church. He so loved the cosmos. This created order. He loved what He arranged. That's why He left you and me. And why do you think we still here? You think God don't care about these people? You think God don't care about these systems? The Bible said we're going to judge. What He said we're going to do? He said you're the salt of the earth and the light of these systems. The word world talking about infrastructure systems. Oh. God care about them." And if he didn't care about him, you and me, we would still be here. I know we're trying to figure out why God didn't just take on up. We got to say, why we didn't go on? Because God cares. He says, folks, I got the anonymous flow. Not others flow. He says, I got sheep. The anonymous flow. I must bring them. So listen, Marissa, I want to encourage you. I want to urge you. I want you to know that we're in a different time now. And we're trying to get people to acclimate. Make, make that adjustment in your mind. You have to spend some time before God getting heaven's counsel. And listen, I'm, I'm going to go back right here. because I'm going to get you to come back. I've got to read this. Now notice this. In Hebrews 12. And it says now, as he tells us not to sin, we don't refuse him. I mean, that's going to take some effort. That's going to take some sensitivity. Because he said those other people, they did not escape. They didn't escape. Well, if they didn't escape, that was only about God said they did not escape. So who did who refused him on earth? So he tells us to see that. Make sure you don't turn away in our day to make sure, my brother and sister, 
that you don't, when he said don't escape, make sure you don't run away, right? Make sure you don't flee. Make sure you don't disappear. Make sure you're not, you're not a no-show. As a believer, make sure we don't shun. Sometimes we know God's speaking, and then we try to label it something else and excuse it. But I'm telling you, God's then I beg him out. Don't shun him. Don't try to bypass him. He says, see that you don't, because you won't escape. If they didn't escape, we refuse him who spake on earth. He said, much, listen what he said, much more. So it's more crucial, it's more critical that we really listen to God in these times. And I'm telling you right now, because the level of our consciousness in terms of who God is and where God is, I got to wake Now listen, I'm going to read this and I'm going to get you to come go with me real quick Ephesians 5. And listen, what he says in Ephesians, yeah, I'm sorry, Hebrews 12, chapter verse 26. He said, whose voice then shook the earth, but not now he hath promised, oh my God. Can you believe that God has put, made it a promise? That he made it a promise saying that yet once more, he said, yet once more, I shake not only the, the earth only, Glory. but he said, I'm but also heaven. And then towards that verse, and this word, yet once more, signified. And notice what this word signified. This is what the thing we're trying to emphasize to people. Now, when he says signified, you remember what he said in, the, uh, in, in 1 Timothy 4 1? Now the Spirit speaks expressly in the latter time. Now, the Spirit is going to speak in a way that is explicit. It's going to be stated, expressed. He's going to be speaking in a way that those of us who are tied to his body, we're not going to be able to miss it. That those, listen, those leaders and who God's raising up in this hour, they're not going to be able to miss it. And there are folks like myself that are crying out, that are beating this drum, trying to get people to understand. Right now we're in a day where God, is, his name is being exalted. His name is being elevated. We're, we're like kind of in that first of John 1.18. John 1, 18 said, no man has seen God at any time. But the Bible said, but the only God and Son was in the bosom of the Father. He has declared it. Think about it for a moment. We're in a time where the creation is groaning right now. What is taking place? The creation is groaning. And the Bible said, they're waiting on the manifestation of the sons of God. And so in that, listen, God always put indicators and markers all along the way. The markers and indicators all along the way to give us a glimpse. And think about it. Now, here we are in Passover. Here we are, come, just come through Passover. And at the same time we're in Passover, this, this major plague hits. It's right around the feast time because those feasts were designed to mark time. Those are kairoses. Those are divine ones. Those are set times. Those are times that God has set, time that God has set to meet. Those are times that God allocated that he wants something that's going to happen, something that's going to transpire so we can keep up with what he's doing in those moments and those times. So think about it for a moment. And we told you that at the, at the Passover, this thing happened. And remember, people start going back to Exodus, talking about uh, in the Passover, how did they begin to, when the plagues hit, and the tenth plagues hit, when those tenth plagues hit, and God began to take all the firstborn. Well, guess what's happening right now? In the Passover, as the Bible said, it was taking hyssop, dipping it in the blood, in the basin, and sprinkling it on the doorposts. And we've been trying to tell people where we are now because we're in a transition, and we're trying to go into the Hebrew, the, the Hebraic calendar. We just came out of iron. That's had to do with seeing. We said seeing is the gateway to reality. But we're shifting over to pain. Pain has to do with the mouth. It has to do with vocalization, speaking, de declaration. And so now we got to begin to declare. So in that, we hit around Passover. Around Passover, here we are in the midst of, I mean, we're right in the throes, throes of a global pandemic. And in the midst of that, in the midst of that, now we got to begin to declare. Because that's what required the Passover. In Passover, they had to dip the hyssop in the basin to get the blood put on the post. Today, we our revelation, what we have to do now, we have to begin to, the Bible said, we overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. So now people got to begin to declare, they got to speak. That same spirit of faith has to be released. Now we got to declare, we got to make him know. Now we got to reveal, because the creation is growing. And it's waiting on the manifestation of the Son of God. Remember what he said in John 1, 3, John, 1 John 3 and 8? The Bible says, for this purpose was the Son of God manifested, that he might destroy the works of the devil. Now listen, let me do this because I'm going to show you something right before I get too far. Notice what he says. In this Hebrews 12, we're going back. Verse 27. He said, whose voice then shook the earth, but now he had promised, saying, yet once more, I shake not only the earth only, but also heaven. 20, I'm sorry, 27 verse. And this not yet once more signifying the removing of those things that are shaken, as of things that are made, that those things which cannot be shaken may remain. Now, I, I, I'll come back and share that just a little bit. 
But look at verse 28. Wherefore we receive the kingdom which cannot be moved. He said, let us have grace. Whereby we may serve him, we may serve God, acceptably, with reverence and godly fear. For our God is a consuming fire. Now, I want to read that to you because I want to emphasize it. Because one of the words that we're sharing, one of the words that we've been emphasizing to the people is that we're in the midst of a shaking. God's after something in this season. He's after something in our, in our day. In the shaking, God is looking for reverence. He's looking for honor. He's looking for his name to be honored. He's looking for his presence to be honored. He's looking because what his people have disregarded, I mean, they've ignored him. I mean, they've pushed him from every one of his campaigns. Everything that God has owned, claimed, they claim to, we pushed him out of it. Listen. I want to pray. I feel something right here. 